everybody and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in again. I um, would like to start by apologizing for the very long video uh, in the last episode. I know we covered a good amount and there is so much more to cover, especially in the beginning, uh, but I really don't want to, you know, make half hour long videos consistently. So I've actually gone ahead and downloaded a small uh, application that will just help quickly uh, keep me within the range that I want to be in. And uh, if we need to wrap things up and turn them into part one, part two, then, then so be it. But I'd rather give you guys digestible content than just long, long, long videos. So without further ado, I'd love to jump into what we're talking about today, uh, which is building off of this UI and dealing with image views. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click one, grab it. And when you're doing it in this design view, it looks like it actually pops up a little window to, um, to populate that. So let's uh, let's go get ourselves an image um, for those of you who know me I uh, played soccer all my life I'm a fan of the Premier League so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and do that um, I think I ended up actually downloading this image here yeah, as you can see it's in my recent downloads um, so you know go to Google find any image whatever you're interested in maybe this one if you want to keep it uh, you know, follow along with me, uh, save image as, and just save it to your downloads folder. You can see I've actually already downloaded it there. Um, once you have an image uh, on your computer, we now need to get it into your project. So we will do that by opening our resource manager, clicking this little plus symbol, and clicking the import drawables button. Uh, on, you know, find your, find your file, wherever it is, your image, um, name it whatever you want, works out for me uh, and we're just going to import it you know not super important but these dimensions worked out fantastically so that's why I'm going to uh, you know just keep this image um, and now if we put this guy in the middle of the screen we'll see that within our project it now recognizes that we have this logo so we will click it um, and we'll put it in here and this image is huge so uh, I'm going to flip over to the code view here to just make things a little easier. Um, we want this to kind of just be smaller and a little bit underneath the subtitle, you know, kind of providing a little header image, if you will. Um, yeah, this editor absolute stuff this is kind of why I don't like using the editor. Um, we don't need that right now. But what we do need, if we're in the constraint layout, you guys know, uh, we need to start constraining this thing so that it uh, it doesn't freak out. I think. Yeah, so it says this view is not vertically constrained, it, it'll jump to the top unless you provide a vertical constraint. And if we actually remove the horizontal constraint, it'll like double complain saying it'll go to um, zero, zero uh, at, at runtime, which wouldn't be the worst for this image, but obviously you don't want to do that in general. So we will also do the constraint to the top to bottom of the subtitle. Um, and now we want to fix this. Look at how large this thing is here. Uh, what we're actually going to do is we're going to keep the width uh, match parent, uh, basically take up as much room as you can, and we're going to set the height to zero dp. Uh, no, nobody, nobody's. Uh... Okay, uh, image is just going to stay that way, I guess. Um, we'll add our little content description so that this thing goes away. At null, we'll just kind of. You know, provide nothing to the system. Um, we're going to push it from the top, let's say 48 dp, to keep it away. And uh, this still looks gross. So, with images, the most important thing is your aspect ratio. Um, this will make sure that your image basically maintains the same size, follows the same ratio, in this case, 16 by 9. Um, and it, it becomes more important when you start running this application or supporting um, different screens, different devices, larger devices, smaller devices at different densities. You know, you don't want your images, especially when it's a JPEG or a PNG, you don't want it to be um, stretching, uh, you know, elongating itself, making it look weird, especially with text. You can very easily see when something doesn't look right. Um, so the dimension ratio is actually an attribute that exists only under the constraint layout. So that's also another amazing reason to use the constraint layout and you can basically 
um, take your image and keep it at a very particular ratio uh, just to provide that like little bit of professional feel. And you guys know margin horizontal, we're just going to put a little bit on it there, 16 dp to kind of, um, you know, buff it out from the edges a little bit. Um, if you saw the screen move before, uh, see how margin horizontal is down here, and then if I go uh, this way, uh, rearranging the code basically puts it in the way that uh, Google wants it to, uh, wants it to be. So I, I think it basically follows alphabetical order and it's just like a habit of mine. So if things just randomly jump, just know that I'm doing uh, on Mac at least Alt Command L. Um, right now it says no lines changed, but that will actually just format the entire file that you're in to be you know, the way that um, your, your project settings are set up. So I do that all the time. Uh, so, sorry, but uh, boom. We have an image view here underneath the subtitle with you know a little bit of a break here uh, in the UI. So let's just go ahead and um, just go ahead and run this, and that's what we got. Um, you know, again, the UI is not really too interactive at the moment, but uh, some major things that we went over here. Uh, you know, especially the aspect ratio. That's something that took me a very long time to figure out and uh, understand. So if you don't quite get it, um, you know, you can Google about aspect ratios and such, but um, especially for images, it's just extremely important um, to, to make sure that your images are going to be laid out. They're going to uh, take up the same amount of room. They're going to uh, look the same uh, across all the different devices. You know, it's, just, it's going to scale up or down um, if we were to have a bigger or smaller device than what we have here, uh, the Pixel 3. Excel. So um, I do think that I would like to make this a little bit um, a little bit more interactive. So let's actually jump into the code here real quick and and try to do something. Um, so I don't want to dive too deep into you know dissecting exactly what this is, this class here, how this all works, but know that our uh, main activity that has been built um, in Kotlin. This is how you you signify extends. Uh, you know, the extends keyword in Java, Java uh, extends app compatibility. And these are basically the, the building blocks for um, activities which are basically seen as screens in Android applications. So uh, as you move from screen to screen, you could very easily imagine behind the scenes, you're moving from one activity to the next activity. Um, and then the system will manage the back stack for you and, and you can kind of just go backwards and navigation works. Um, so you could see here the base class for activities. Um, and by the way, by doing that, I was actually holding command and then highlighting it, it turns into like a, a, a link that you can click on. And then by clicking it, it actually, you kind of like dive into uh, and drill into whatever it is that you're looking at. So um, anyway, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at activities in a little bit uh, when we start to really get into some code, but know that there is something called lifecycle callbacks, and that's exactly what this thing is. Um, OnCreate can be thought of as kind of like the main function in uh, some of your other applications or the entry point into you know an application, uh, and specifically in this case, the OnCreate function is basically the entry point into this activity. So when the system loads the activity, on create is the uh, the first thing to get called, or the first um, lifecycle callback to be to be invoked, and um, you know there are a whole bunch of other ones that we'll get to in the future. But the most important thing is set content view again. Command click, uh, no Java docs for us there. But um, this is how we tell the system to basically load a particular layout file as the layout for this activity. So you can see here r.layout.activityMain actually references this file. And the reason that it's layout is because it's in the resource layout folder. Um, whereas before when we were referencing colors, uh, it would be r.color, the name of your color, etc. So um, there's a little bit of structure here to it so that you can kind of immediately see exactly where it is in the uh, project and, and understand that anything in the layout folder is actually just going to be layouts um, that the system can inflate. So uh, let's go ahead and grab our bottom button. We were just going to go ahead and put a little long click listener here to um, to the bottom button 
so that something actually happens. So in Kotlin, there is val or var. That's not syntactically correct, but you know, uh, val is essentially seen as a value in Java is basically the same as final. Um, so any variable that you declare as a val cannot be reassigned. Um, so for this case, we're going to use val, but um, you know, if you want to actually modify the variable for some reason, um, you need to make sure you use var. So var for variable, val for value, and values don't change. So then comes our name of uh, the variable that we're going to uh, be using. And then as you can see here, uh, it's kind of providing a little bit of uh, syntax help here. Um, but once you do this little colon, um, that then separates the name of the variable to the type. So previously in Java, it would be something like this. Like this. Um, here, we're defining it this way. Uh, we can also continue now with the assignment and call find view by ID, r dot ID. Look at that, I already knew, bottom button. So find view by ID, if we command click into it, is um, a function that is built into the app compat activity that our activity extends. So it's available to us. And essentially it's going to look in the uh, layout file that has been inflated and try to find an ID that has um, a, a view, excuse me, that has this particular ID. And we can very easily command click into it. And not only will we see the cursor here, but this will be highlighted. And so this is actually the button that we're referencing in, uh, in code. So at this point, we've actually successfully stored basically this button in a variable in code. Um, so now the possibilities are endless. Uh, so as I said, we're going to set an on click listener and uh, yeah, set on click listener is what it is. It's the function that we will be calling. Uh, and basically inside here, uh, this is a function that's going to be past the view itself, uh, referred to as it. Um, which is the button that was clicked. So that's important for other things down the line when we're talking about context, uh, but we will not get into that at the moment. So let's just say um, we are just going to log something here. So logging in Android is pretty basic. Um, let's say button clicked. So uh, when this uh, on click listeners invoked, we are going to log a statement to the uh, either the or is it the log cat or this run tab, which I mentioned a long time ago. And um, this is what they call the tag and then the message, and, and that'll make a lot more sense in a second. So uh, let me actually get this tab up. Uh, so here, anything before the colon is the tag, and everything after the colon is the message. So once I click this button, you'll see a new log statement, log button clicked, uh, boom. And then, you know, if I continue clicking on it, uh, you know, we get some other output and whatnot, but you can clearly see that, that this is running, this is working, and that this code is actually running. So in the next video, we will um, dive a little bit deeper into it, maybe modify a different part of the UI or do something else on this button click. Um, but this is basically as simple as it's going to get as far as referencing the UI from uh, code and doing something with it. Uh, also, one last thing to note is that you actually do not need semicolons in Kotlin at the end of your uh, lines of code. And it'll actually gray it out and even tell you uh, redundant semicolon, meaning it's, it's implied, it's not necessary. So that's going to be something that'll take a little getting used to. Uh, if you're coming from Java, but trust me, it's definitely a welcome change. So um, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we will continue on uh, when I see you next. Thanks.